and welcome back to another video. Okay, this video I'm going to show you my new hydroponic system. Yes, I've only been doing hydroponics for about a year or so, so every time we do a new system we sort of upgrade it and are aware of more issues with the previous system, etc, etc, etc. So this one is pretty much just a recycled system. So I've used the Beto buckets that I had on my other system and I've just modified it for a slightly bigger pipe because originally I had smaller pipe and I think this is 32 mil pipe. I had 25 mil pipe originally and it didn't sit right. If you haven't seen a Beto bucket before or a Dutch bucket, it is a bucket that has a false bottom in it, a little lip, so the water actually drips through, fills up down the bottom and then overflows. And this overflows into PVC pipe and the PVC pipe just goes into a tub and I'll show you what's in there a little bit later. So it's a very, very simple system. So the way that it works is water pumps up the top and just trickles through your medium. This is just perlite, which is perlite. You could use anything you want. The old Beto bucket systems with the little cups, I think work a lot easier because you don't have to fill the whole tub up with medium, which is a little bit annoying, but the roots appreciate something to hold on to. So these are just basic tomato plants. So these are Roma tomatoes. Yes, I live in the subtropics, so apart from extreme heat, then cold, then heat, then cold, and all that sort of stuff, we have an absolute ton of bugs. Yeah, if it's not beetles eating things, it's butterflies laying eggs on stuff. And then we've got mites, and the last few batches of tomatoes have been absolutely covered in mites. So I think this time I'm going to buy some predatory mites and release them. So I've got to do that soon because these were only planted last night. And this whole system here is a solar system. Here is my junk pile. That is my solar panel, which is connected to a pump in a tub at the back. And when it does turn on, all the water pumps through this pipe here into these little regulators, which are just held up with sticks, and to there. So in my actual tub, it's a very, very simple setup. You can use a bucket or whatever you want. This is just an old pond filter. There is my pump there, which just plugs directly into the solar panel. Not going at the moment because it is silly early morning and the sun is behind that tree there. So once the sun hits there, boom, we will have power. At that, we'll pump the water up through this, just, what is this, irrigation pipe or whatever it is. It's just one elbow there. It comes around there and goes up the top. And then I've just got these little sprinkler things tapped into it. All these I've had from previous things in that, so they're relatively cheap to buy. They're just screwed into the pipe, and then the water trickles in. And I've got like a little tap on each one, so I can adjust the flow, just in case one gets clogged, or there's too much flow through those ones and not these ones, I can just regulate it. That's all that is. But the water will just pump from there into these, trickle through, back through the pipe, and underneath, there is my pipe overflow. It's just two little elbows, two T pieces, and the water trickles back in. I've just got two of them instead of one, just in case too much water goes through, because I think this pump is, say, 600 litres an hour, so it should be fine, but 200 litres an hour would work. It just depends on the pressure. But those are my overflows back into here. Now, this solution is reverse osmosis water, which is RO water. I've adjusted the pH down to about six, because I'm pretty sure tomatoes I think it's 5.5 to 6.5 pH wise in the water. And I've just used this very old container of Seachem pH or acid regulator. So in RO water, depending on how much you use, you can bring it down to 4.5. Very, very easy. Super old pH test kit, just to double check what it is. And to the RO water, I've added calcium nitrite, I think one gram per liter which is not very much. I think this whole system is 60 litres, so six grams out of my 20 kilo thing, bag, that's a bag. And I've used the same amount of the diamond tea, which is like a fertiliser that goes in water, which is aquaponics. Well, no, hydroponics, that's aquaponics. And actually, while we're here, bloody aquaponics. Ah, if you've been following my last video, I had to rip out all these plants, bar those two, because some think, butterfly laid eggs and completely oh, look, there's another one they do this they wrap around there it is that little caterpillar 
little bastard. That caterpillar there, that's now, oh look, why am I not killing things? Well, he might not have the right food there and he may not have survived that fall, but at least he's got a sporting chance. Yeah, they keep doing that. So they have pretty much wiped out just overnight. Oh, look at that, destroyed that much leaf. Yeah, they wiped out just about every single one of my zucchinis, or cucumbers. I keep saying zucchinis, I have zucchinis around the other side. These are cucumbers. So I've planted more of them here, and like that, I'm gonna watch for eggs and bugs. And I noticed that one because of all the poo overnight on that plant there. But anyway, this is aquaponics, which is fish. And the fish do poopies and the poopies grow plants and all that. Where hydroponics is no fish, but the good thing with hydroponics is you can pinpoint the solution so you have enough nutrients for your plants and you can pinpoint pH without stressing the fish out because certain fish don't like certain pH and all that wonderful stuff. Okay, so I have just jumped a little bit in time just to show you it going in full sun there's how much water flow we've got going through all the little bits and pieces. Yeah, and the water just goes through there, back into the pipe, and then back into our main tub. How exciting is that? So all going well, these plants will grow super, super fast. We've got a couple of little leaks, but we're gonna fix that for a little bit of silicon. Fun stuff. There we go, simple as that. So the water's gonna go through pretty much, uh, most of the day and then off at night but because of the water at the bottom the plants are not going to completely dry out or anything like that anyway back to the main video so i think the main issue i'm going to have with the system and i've also got like a lid on top just to stop rain from actually diluting my water and stuff like that is bugs getting into there like you just saw with that caterpillar so i think maybe i'll do a fine mesh around the sides we're just starting to get a little bit of sun so maybe this will kick in soon um, yeah so if i do a fine mesh around the sides that's going to hopefully reduce the amount of bugs trying to wipe out my plants because they sniff them out they are little buggers and if you've ever tried to grow anything at home without nuking it with chemicals which we're not really going to do it's a right pain everything goes great almost ready to harvest and then boom everything gets wiped out overnight <laughs> So yeah, I think mesh around the sides of some type and hopefully, you know, mesh that's not going to hide the sun because we need a lot of light for these plants. And apart from that, some sort of climbing or trellis thing for the tomatoes. But I think because I've got this metal frame, I can just suspend some string or something like that along and maybe a few little bars across here so then I can just support the actual plants. So I think, yeah, a bar across here, a bar across there, two strings, two strings, that'll stop them from swaying if we get a storm or anything like that. But that is roughly where we are with the new system. So I'm not entirely sure how long that solution is gonna last. I'll have to find my um, checker to see actually conductivity meter, wherever it has gone. But at the moment we're just doing the gram per liter thing and it should be pretty right. So the reason why we are doing hydroponics and not just planting them in the dirt is we don't have to water them this way. Everything is solar powered. So when the sun hits the panel, it pumps the water through. At night, you have the water in the bottom so the roots have still got water and it's a nice, easy system. So it's not using any power. It's not using really hardly any water because that tub of water is gonna last for quite a while. And we're just gonna check the conductivity of the water maybe every week or two, probably every two weeks because we're a little bit slack and see how we go. Because as the water gets absorbed through the plants, trace elements and minerals will build up and you just need to recheck that, otherwise you're gonna to get too much minerals and that will screw your plants up. But so far, so good. We have tomato plants, I've planted two in each one of these tubs, and these Beto buckets you can just get from eBay. I think I got like 18 of them or something like that, or 16 of them, relatively cheap for like $200 Australian, so whatever that works out. All this tubing is just PVC that I've had lying around and sort of modified to, for it to fit. And yeah, that's just cheap, cheap, cheap stuff you can get from any hardware store. And obviously you don't need to use an old filter like I have, a big bucket will work or anything like that. I just use this one because 
it's just been sitting there in my junk pile and it pretty much fits. Modify it to cut a little bit out like that. But the whole idea of the lid is to stop sun from hitting it, algae growing. I'm gonna get a little bit of algae growing on my perlite, which I have before, which you can see from previous builds, but that's not a huge issue really. But yes, that is our new hydroponic system. Comment down below if you've got any sort of modifications or any suggestions or anything like that, because obviously we're new at hydroponics, but it's getting better every time, I think. So this is, seems to be the easiest way of doing it. Pretty sure my tomatoes are not going to outgrow this area. They're gonna obviously grow to the top, but then I can trim them and support them with some strings or wires or whatever. But I think apart from, yeah, the mesh around the side, should have a decent amount of sun. It's gonna get sun up to about two o'clock in the afternoon, and then it's shaded with the house. But this is like 6 a.m. in the morning, and the sun's already about to hit. Well, there's the sun there anyway. But anyway, we will see you in the next video. Expect an update on this maybe in a couple of weeks. Hopefully it won't be a giant disaster and the bugs won't wipe it out before I can buy some predatory mites. <laughs> the annoying thing with mites is you can't see them until it's almost too late. Anyway, we will see you in the next video. If you want to watch other stuff, stuff on the screen and have fun.